Chotzi and Scarlet were our hosts for Halloween Havoc Part 1 down in NXT, and they dressed up throughout the evening, and here, Shotzi was Pinhead from Hellraiser, and given her new hairstyle, actually looked pretty good. Also, hello, my friends, and welcome to Ups and Downs for NXT, and now, what's happened is people are going, why aren't you doing Ups and Downs for this show? I'll tell you why, because there's too much wrestling on television. One day a wrestling demon is gonna eat my soul. And that's what you want, is it? Brad, thanks very much. Kiss my chundies. I don't know what that means. I'm so tired. There's too much wrestling. Let's up those downs. We were not mucking around either, because our very first match was the Devil's Playground match. I still don't really know what that is. It was Roxanne Perez versus Keanu James though. And yeah, essentially, it was just an ODQ fight. And because we tied it into a playground, we had playground paraphernalia around the place. So now at least we know if you go to hell, you'll still be able to play on a swing set. Actually, before we got to the weapons though, these two were doing sunset power bombs onto the outside when Kiana got a laptop and she whacked Perez right in the head. So there you go. The devil does indeed like mobile computing. They then started to use a chain and a swing set and some kind of board and the seesaw, because once again, all the things here were from a playground. I'm pretty sure I made that very clear. Although they didn't care about any of that. They started just jumping off Barry Barricade, which one, wasn't very nice because he's already dead and he most certainly did not go to hell. And two, they both missed. They were also using this chain to pull each other into re the ring post. So I was like, well, why don't you just use the damn ring if you're going to do it anyway? When Perez was like, you know what? I am going to get Kiana's loaded bag, which is a perfectly normal sentence. I'm going to smash her in the head. I'm going to hit the pop rocks on the outside. And I'm going to get the one, two, three. It's exactly what she did. So I do believe this now means Kiana James does have to go to hell. That's how the stipulation works. And as I always say, Roxanne Perez could be on the main roster tomorrow. And this Kiana James man, she gets better every single week. The future is bright and it's getting it up. Despite this being a very special episode of sports entertainment, we were still having some interviews. So Vic Joseph was talking to Carmelo Hayes. They played to the former champ as well, because of course the big question here is, oh, did you attack Trick Williams? And even though he is acting more like a villain, he's still making it very clear, no, I did not, and everybody needs to shut the flub up. Joseph basically turned into somebody from LA Noir here, because we were like, oh, why did you do it? And Carmelo was like, look, is this an interview or an interrogation? And here is the deal. I will get my championship back, and I'm sure Trick Williams will totally smash it too. He also shouted out that he wanted justice for his friend when he did walk off. And look, I tell you this, he is playing it a little bit over the top, but I actually think that makes it more fun. Once again, why do we watch wrestling? To have fun, for goodness sake. I am giving him it up. And also, look, this could be a total red herring, because the story is going to head off in a different direction. The metaphor with them playing on a Ouija board, because of course it is Halloween, and that's just what we do. When Tozawa walked in, and he stole the Heritage Cup. I was just dying. What a wonderful week Tozawa is having. And don't forget, on Monday, we have boarded the Tozawa train, and we ain't getting off it until he starts getting wins. We then went straight into a debut after this, because it was the former Brian Pillman Jr., now known as Lexus King. And in his entrance, right, this throne kind of slides in from the side. And I think probably intentionally, it's a little bit like watching a 1980s heavy metal music video. It also ties into his name because he's meant to be a king and he was taking on Dante Chen here. And you can already figure it out. They did have a little bit of a fisty cuffs when Brian or Lexus, Lexus, whatever we're calling him. It's definitely not called Lexus, Lexus, but he should be. Hit the swing and neck breaker to break his neck off the middle rope, which did look quite cool and he got the win. He also made sure to keep shouting into the camera, Brian Pillman Jr. is dead and this new person is here. And look, it's very early days, but I do like the direction. Whoever came up with this should have a pat on the back. Give it an up. Chase, you were then getting ready in the back because they do have their big tag team title match later and Thea Hell was like, all right, look, I won't throw the towel in when we went back to our women's breakout tournament. Now, I'm not going to get into this every single week, but in case you did miss last week's episode, when it comes to obvious wrestlers who are green or are still learning the ropes and just so happening to be doing it on TV, no, I'm not going to sit here and go, well, that was totally crap. That is like me going to do some karaoke and I come and sit back down and you go, well, you didn't sound like Celine Dion. What the flub were you expecting? There's also Kalani Jordan versus Ariana Grace. And look at this, right? Grace has got a funny character. She's all like, oh man, I'm a beauty queen, and therefore I decided to become a wrestler. And Jordan is clearly quite the athlete. She can do all the flippy dippy doodah stuff. That's basically how she won here too, because she did hit the split-legged moonsault for the one, two, three. 
and more individuals should use that as a finisher. She's now going through to the finals, and I just enjoy this for what it is. Like, come 2044, if she main events WrestleMania, we can go, oh my gosh, we were there at the beginning, and that's just a nice twist on an old tale. What? You. Because we don't give the P, because much like what we're seeing, it's a work in progress. When I got a little bit sad again, because Robert Stone and Von Wagner were in the rehab facility as Wagner was like, I'm not ready to come back to TV. And Stone was like, don't worry, I am going to get revenge for you, because I have challenged Bron Breaker to a match next week. Although all he wants to do is get one slap in on him. It's probably not going to happen. I just really want this to be goofy wrestling for life, but we're kind of playing it a little bit serious. Although, once again, I do understand. Basically, every single injury angle in WWE is goofy wrestling for life. This is nice, I suppose. They are becoming wonderful friends. The Creed's and Ivy Nile then stormed out because they were super mad about what Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza had done last week. Which did make sense, they screwed them over. Shotzi and Scarlet were here, so they were like, well, why don't you have a match next week? But you have to spin that stupid wheel. And when they did, the stipulation is going to be tables, ladders, and scares. Very sadly, this isn't somebody hiding behind a ladder and going, bah! and trying to get like a, oh my gosh, to win the thing. Although it is NXT, one day they may do that. When we got our first big surprise of the evening, and actually it was a double big surprise, because it made me convinced that what we got in the main event we weren't going to get. Point is, Chase U won the flipping tag team tiles. So this was proper warm and fuzzy in your tum tum stuff, because Duke Hudson and Andre Chase have come of age over the last few months. And now they've made it with the big time. It is also the same for Tony D and Stax, though. They have totally found their characters. So in reality, we couldn't lose. Although they did. I don't know what I'm talking about. Stax also started things off with a dive when we cut to the commercial break, because of course we did. Although when he went for the more standard elbow drop, he missed. He was totally murked. It did free up Chase to get the kind of hot tag to Duke Hudson. And remember this. He needs to be right up there when it comes to running the hot tag. He's pretty damn good at it. He's got fire. He also hit this great boss man slam two for a one two ooh when Tony D and Stax were finally working together to tag each other in. And honestly, I thought it was done after their power and glory superplex. I mean, we got the one, we got the two, and Hudson broke it up at three. Or just before it. JC Jane then kind of freaked out because, of course, she is the dark side to chase you's light side. It was all like, you should use this crowbar. That just made me laugh so much. I mean, talk about escalation. Of course, Andre said that he wasn't going to do this. And when both guys started hitting the ropes, accidentally, but maybe on purpose, but not really, Tony knocked JC Jane off the apron. And he was so surprised that he had done this. Andre used the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll up. And he got the three. I was like, damn. I didn't think it was going to happen. Chasey and Hell still celebrated this too, even though you can't really trust them. And honestly, I'm just so pleased that we did do this. Sometimes you should be changing the championships. I mean, bring down the surprise roll-up counter. It goes up by one, but it's also getting it up. Nathan Fraser was then doing that weird new show that he does. And essentially, the headline was... I don't like Dominic Mysterio. He feels like he got disrespected a couple of weeks ago, which is why he will win the North American title last week. As long as Rhea Ripley allows Dominic Mysterio's balls to be laid out of her purse. And I was like, dude, that's not how it works. Rhea Ripley definitely don't carry a purse around. We went straight into a Baron Corbin interview after this. If I was Baron, I'd be a bit like, am I actually going to be able to finish or are you going to disrespect me? Thankfully, he was able to get his words in and he too denied attacking Trick Williams because he was more concerned about the fact that he almost became the number one contender seven days ago. And now he didn't. He needs to rethink his plans. When we got another variation of an ODQ match, it was Gigi Dolan versus Blair Davenport in a lights out fight. And they actually did turn off the lights. Instantly the fans wanted tables too, because that's just what we do in 2023, because we're a bunch of goobers. And while Blair was like, okay, I'll give you what you want, she then didn't use it, and everybody went boo. They then just smacked each other with whatever they could find, and fair play, it did feel a little bit like the first match, but hey-ho, it was a stipulation pay-per-view where we got to a mad, mad finish. Because Blair Davenport was all of a sudden like, wait a minute, Alan, the announce table is some tables, and this table I've set up is a table, so I'm going to grab you, Gigi, and she gave her a falcon arrow from one through the other, threw her in the ring, hit her with the big knee, one, two, three. And I'm going to say this, first off, that rhymed, so it must have been the correct decision, and two, she essentially did win with the Falcon Arrow. That is two in a month on WWE TV. That's huge. We have zoomed through this too, but you know the deal. There was other weapons, there was straps, there was chairs, and they just kicked each other's ass. I enjoyed it for what it was. Perfectly fine. 
up. Ilya Dragunov was then having a sit-down interview with Vic Joseph, and he too wanted to take shots at Carmelo Hayes. He doesn't think he's very focused anymore, and therefore, he's never gonna win the NXT title. Carmelo was watching this too, and he was like, man, why do people keep taking shots at me, which is quite fair, when Shot Z and Scarlet walked up, and they were pretending to be the twins from The Shining, they were like, whoa, we know that you attacked Trick Williams. Hayes was like, man, you were just ruining my day. At this point, I actually felt quite sorry for the man. Even if he did do it, let him have a break. And then, I think we entered a paradox. As Tiffany Stratton was being interviewed when Fallon Henley found her, but she had dressed up as Tiffany Stratton for Halloween, and she did such a good impression I was like, does the universe know this isn't the same person talking to themselves? Of course, Tiffany was never going to like that, so they did have a big fight. And if for some reason one of them needed to be arrested, the cops would have been totally screwed. They'd be like, which one is real? I imagine it means we are going to get a fight next week when it was through to our other semi-final of the Women's Breakout Tournament, Lola Weiss versus Carmen Petrovic. Now look, yes, when you do sit down and go through this, you can tell they've been rehearsing it all week. But wouldn't you want to do that? Oh, come here. Barry, not Barry Barricade, just Barry, Baz, B-Dog. Would you like to be able to practice some stuff before we put you on live TV? You go, no nah, man, I'll call it when I'm out there. You an absolute nerd. Petrovic also did a dive here, because of course she did, but because she is a rookie, she doesn't know how to follow up on it. So they got into a kick battle. <laughs> Lola Vice kicked her so hard in the damn brain. Down she went, one, two, three. So we have our finals, and once again, this was okay. Again, I've gone into it way too much, but it gets the U. Interestingly too, Chase U were then celebrating their victory when in walked Piper Niven and Chelsea Green. It's like, how'd they get in here? Now this was good for Thea and JC, because they were like, well now we're gonna talk to Shawn Michaels and try and get a title shot. So there it is, same as every week, GTS. Geese title shot. The matter four then found out Tazawa had stolen the cups, so they had a meltdown, and always remember this. Find somebody who loves you as much as Noam Dar loves that damn thing. You will never be lonely again. This is when Bron Breaker went and found Carmelo Hayes too, and this got really interesting, because even though Bron knows that these two are gonna have to fight till the end of time because they are enemies, he kind of understands where Carmelo Hayes is coming from. I mean, he too thinks that Carmelo probably did attack Trick, so if it's not Hayes now, who the hell is it gonna be? It's not gonna be Dijak. Do you see his social media post? He was like, I beat people up all the time and I do it facing the camera. Why the hell would I change tack now? So maybe it's Repo Man. What an amazing comeback that would be. Once Bron is done with Robert Stone 2, he does wanna get back into his feud with Carmelo Hayes. But in my crazy geekdom, I'm like, could they become a tag team? I actually think they probably could. We then went totally overboard for our main event because Jade Cargill came out with all the bells and whistles and she was sitting in a throne. If it wasn't a throne, it was just a really, really big chair. But as ever, she just comes across like a megastar. She also made a great choice as well because she was watching Lyra Valkyria taking on Becky Lynch for the NXT title. And who the flub had Lyra with the championship in their bingo book? Not I, but she did. Ooh, lally. Now, fair play to Becky, because she went out of her way to make Lyra look like a killer here. I mean, not only were they going back and forth, but my word, when we got to the finish, it was like Valkyria was a superhero. They also both whammed each other on the floor when Lyra was like, I'm desperate to get a Northern Light suplex. This is kind of a good metaphor for life, because she tried and tried and tried, and eventually she did it. Yes. It actually didn't help because Lynch fired back with the Bexploder when she was going for the manhandle slam. But that's when Valkyria was like, no, I don't want to get attacked by that. Instead, she found herself in the disarmor. Whoops. Now, she was able to get out of this by grabbing the rope, so she hit a set-out bomb of power for a 1-2-oo. So Becky Lynch came back with a DDT, and she got a 1-2-oo. This was totally madness, and I started to think, hey-ho, I think we're going to do it. But surely not. But we did. Because clearly this whole thing was designed to get Valkyria over because Becky grabbed her. She came with this brutal manhandle slam where she said she landed on her head. The ref went one and the ref went two. And Lyra kicked out. This NXT audience couldn't believe it. And Bex did the whole, oh, can't believe it face. Super serious time. Because she is a veteran, she was like, well, I'm just going to hit you with another one. But this time, Lyra reversed it into the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And she got the one, two, three. And I tell you, on any other show, I'd be like, we did two, two in one evening to win titles. But I was so surprised and I was so elated and I was so impressed with what Becky has done with this championship. 
I just clapped my hands. I was like, right, we got to use this to push Lyra Valkyria. But two, we all need to give Becky Lynch her flowers. She is so damn good. Up. It also made me laugh because it means we've totally screwed Zia Lee up for again. It's like, you're never going to get your title shot. And these two hugged to end NXT. And that was nice in your tootsie toes. They can be friends again. Which brought us to the end of Halloween Havoc Part 1. And you know the deal with NXT. You know what they're going to do. They totally understand their personality. Nine times out of ten, they deliver. It is such an entertaining show. Up. Now, of course, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's episode on NXT. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. There's a video on the screen. It's ups and downs for Raw. I massively would appreciate it if you watched that. And go and share. Because if you want the ups and downs juggernaut to keep on rolling... Well, that's what you got to do. I have been Simon Miller. I appreciate your time. I watched wrestling so you don't have to. And also sacrifice so much sleep. See you soon.